Do you guys remember Gen 4? I sure do. And I remember very clearly not enjoying any additional evolutions they added to some of my previous favorite Pokemon. Licky Licky, Togekiss, Rhyperior, Magmortar, all disgusting. And then there's Ambipom. <laughs> Um, easily my second least favorite Pokemon. Right behind Stinking Crabbomitable. What the heck? Magnezone, Tangrowth, and Electrovire are cool though. And the latter is the topic of this video. Okay, so why do a video on Electrovire? Well, glad you asked. You see, while researching for another video, we found that Electrovire's Pokedex entries state that it pushes the tips of its two tails against the foe, then lets loose with its over 20,000 volts of power. That seems pretty intense, right? Well, is it? I mean, Pokedex entries are definitely written by 10-year-olds who don't understand the world. Snails that are hotter than the Earth's magma? <laughs> okay, sure, right. But I mean, 20,000 volts, that's a big number. But I mean, would that even be fatal? How much power is needed to electrocute you? And you know, I mean death because I said electrocute, not shock. Common misconception, that one. Being electrocuted means you die. No, the wall outlet did not electrocute you, Timmy, or you wouldn't be standing there telling me about it. Humans, which I am definitely a part of, are pretty good conductors, but also have a decent natural defense called the skin. But before I start talking about death and electricity, maybe we should do a crass course in terminology. Okay, so first up, volt and voltage. I know this is kind of a cliche when you're taking classes on electricity and stuff, but here you go. Think of a pipe with water flowing through it. It's much easier to think about than electricity. You got the mental image? Or, I guess, you're actually looking at the screen. So yeah, there's a pipe of water, good. Okay, so voltage is like the pressure behind the pipe or how much power is pushing the water already inside. Think gravity pulling water down the pipe from the water tower or think of a pump pushing the water through. Next up is amp or ampere. This is the measurement of current or in our diagram, the flow rate of a water. Like if it took a minute to fill a gallon bucket, it would be one amp where an amp is one column per second. Now for a frame of reference, a lightning strike is on average 15 Columns, but some have been recorded as going up to 350 columns. Basically, a column is a measurement of energy in relation to time. Finally, we have ohms or resistance. This in our diagram is how wide the pipe is. Smaller pipe, more resistance. Bigger pipe, less. And finally, with all of that information, we can get wattage. Wattage is our power that can be made using the water. Think of olden day mills. Wattage is the power it produces. It takes into account all of these other factors and makes a simple number to remember. Just voltage multiplied by the amps. Okay, so that might have been a lot to take in. Electricity is really complicated stuff. But now that we know all of the fancy schmancy lingo, let's talk killing stuff. Well, humans at least. Which let me assure you, I am one of them. Oh, suddenly this is my kind of video. You see, humans are pretty fragile if you haven't noticed, but some parts are definitely stronger than others. Like the femur. Man, that bone's strong. And thankfully for you, our skin is pretty resistant to electricity. Ah, and there's that resistant word again. Our skin is a natural insulator, meaning it doesn't really like electricity going through it, as I'm sure you're aware. From person to person, it varies, but on average, our skin's resistance is about 5,000 to 15,000 ohms. Man, fun facts are fun. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and blow your mind a little bit here. You know that small shock you get from static? Rubbing your socks on the floor and then touching another person or some metal, and then you get that little, that little shock? Yeah, that could very well be 20,000 volts. I know, it's crazy, right? And there goes the impressiveness of Pikachu's 10 million volt Thunderbolt move. Well, maybe not. But there definitely goes Electrovire's impressive power. In fact, people have been shocked by huge sums of voltage and lived to tell the tale. Take Harry F. McGrew, who holds the Guinness World Record at surviving a 350,000 volt shock. And yet, on the other side of things, we still have unlucky souls who just perished by touching a 42 volt wall receptacle. So what gives? Now, I'm not saying that higher voltages are safer. Do not go running through those power lines, please. But remember, voltage is just the measurement of pressure that the current has. It's not the pressure or force of the electricity that matters. It's how much electricity goes through your system. Thankfully, your skin helps reduce how often you really feel the shock. But if it's a strong enough zap, you could end up dead. 
in the case of dying by electric shock, the skin is almost like a front wall of defense against that, while the rest of your organs run interference, because the important one is your heart. If your heart gets zapped, you are in trouble. But the rest of you is comparatively fine. But yes, the heart is very weak and very dangerous to get shocked. It doesn't take much electricity there to kill you. I'm gonna go ahead and spook you a bit now. Did you know that a small battery, like a AAA battery, can very easily kill you? Yeah, it's commonly agreed that a continuous flow of 7 milliamps for about 3 seconds to your heart is all it takes to cause arrhythmia, which doesn't stop your heart right away, but pretty much stops your heart. Which, fun fact, is bad for you humans, I mean us humans. But notice now that that number was in milliamps, not volts. Electrovirus Pokedex entry about voltage is useless, beyond letting us know that Electrovire is twice as good as Jolteon, which can only do 10,000 volts. Ha! Huh, I knew it! The Eevees all suck! Stupid cats! It is not about volts, it's all about the amperes. Back to our diagram, you could have an insane amount of pressure building in the water tank, but if the pipe is too small or if the flow valve just isn't open, the water won't go anywhere. Or it will, but it'll take so long that in the case of electricity, your body will just be able to deal with it. Like a small static shock. The voltage may be high, incredibly high even, possibly even insanely high, far beyond that of Pikachu's Z-Move. But if the amps in those are low, doesn't matter. It doesn't do anything. It hurts. Maybe it hurts a lot. It won't kill you or anything, though. It's not that big a deal. What about everyday common life? I mean, it's pretty uncommon to put a battery directly into your heart. Like what, open heart surgery and the doctor needs to replace the battery in his headlamp and oh no, oops, it fell into your heart. Ah, and I'm just looking at it, perplexed. Oh no, it's been like five seconds, now you're dead. Oh geez. Ah. In realistic scenarios, the commonly known fatal current is a whopping 100 milliamps, or 0.1 amps, to 0.2 amps. Anything more and it's actually not as fatal. Yeah, you heard me right, going below and even above that sweet spot of amps isn't as fatal. It's still really bad, of course, and can still kill you, but it is not as likely or as bad. You see, in this small range of 0.1 to 0.2, the heart starts to twitch out of rhythm messing up all of your bloody bits, which is your body. But beyond that, the current is so strong that instead of making your heart beat out of sync and in different proportions to each other, instead your heart just clamps shut because the current is so strong. So yeah, you'll still die, but a stopped heart is much easier to fix with CPR techniques or defibrillation than an off-beat heart. It's drastically going to increase your odds of survival by getting shocked by a higher amount, as long as there's someone around who knows CPR. But that's just taking amps into account. When you then add voltage to the context of knowing the amps, whew, now it gets dangerous. If you have a high amp and high voltage current, you may very well die in an instant. But don't worry, low voltage high amp currents are just as deadly. So then, what does this all mean for Electrovire? Well, it all comes down to whether or not they really want to kill, doesn't it? Sure, their shocks may be 20,000 volts, ooh, but that means literally nothing in the grand scheme of things. This Pokedex entry is just worthless. This is why we don't have 10 year olds doing field research. I mean, look at Pokemon Moon's dex entry for it. A single Electrovire can provide enough electricity for all of the buildings in a big city for a year? Do you realize how insane Saying that is? Remember all those power plants with multiple Pikachus? So doing what we do on this channel, we looked into it. New York, a typically agreed upon big city, takes about 60 billion kilowatt hours. That's what it's measured in, by the way, in case you didn't know, watt hours. Notice how I didn't say watt per hour in that unit, because a kilowatt hour is the measurement of power itself, not usage. But I don't really think Game Freak meant a New York-sized city, to be honest. It's one of the few mega cities in the world, and well, this is Pokemon. Welcome to Goldenrod, population like 12 or something. That was sarcasm. I didn't actually count, but it sure feels like it. So let's take a moderately large city like Portland, Oregon. Represent 
It's an O, not a gang sign, I swear. Also, not really represent. I'm like an hour away. Kinda wish I was further sometimes. On average, and this data is pretty old, 2002, just so you know, they used 12,000 kilowatt hours annually. Again, it's definitely grown since then, but it's still an insane amount of power to create for a single organism. And that's not even taking into account how much food it would need to create that amount of power, because we're all just small chemical reactors. Just electric types seem to be better at doing that. But Electrovire may well be the most powerful electrical Pokemon in existence. Much stronger than old Zapdos who can only control lightning. Ugh. Controlling lightning is nothing compared to a walking freaking power plant. I'm convinced now that while this 20,000 volt shock may be nothing but a pinprick, volts tell us nothing, you stupid Pokedex. I'm sure he could easily up the amps however he wanted, though, to the point where he could literally melt you now, though, even if you were in a rubber suit. The math for that is not going to be easy to figure out. Unfortunately, amps and kilowatt hours are non-transmutable, one being current and the other being power. So we are going to have to do a little bit of math. I know, I know, sorry, I just want to watch the world learn. Okay. So Electivire, if we are going off of Portland, a moderately sized large city, produces about 12,000 kilowatt hours. You could, in theory, with a big enough current, use 12,000 kilowatt hours in a matter of seconds. Or you could make it last months. Or in this case, a year for an entire city. Because of that, we need to deconstruct our values here. One kilowatt hour is equivalent to 3.6 megajoules, a joule being a unit of energy. Essentially, one joule is one watt of power for one second, or about four calories. So it's a deliciously refreshing packet of crystal light. Mm -mm. Ah! But because a joule is so small, they invented a bunch of conversions to simplify the math. So we need a time, and the regularly accepted fatal time is three seconds, so let's use that. We have X amps at 20,000 volts for three seconds, equaling 12,000 kilowatt hours. Everyone remember algebra, but with extra steps? Good. With all of these variables, we find out that Electrovire ends up with 72,000 amperes. That's saying that it has access to 12,000 kilowatt hours for three seconds. But theoretically, that's what he does over an entire year. So if we break it down further and say, it uses the same amount every day, it's got a total of 32.8 kilowatt hours to use, meaning its amps would be much lower. If it uses an entire day's amount in three seconds, the amperage would be only around 2,000. Point one is enough to kill you, isn't it? 2,000's a big number. <laughs> Stupid Pokedex. <laughs> Either way, I am now convinced that Electrovire could turn you into one crispy, crispy french fry. Of course, that's if it used all of its juice at once, and I'm sure its shocks wouldn't be fatal if it chose to not have them be fatal, so normally it may keep its power in reserve, and only chooses to stun foes with its insane power. But if you piss it off, you know, it... Zoop. You're a puddle. Electric type's probably one of the most terrifying types, honestly. Ghost is nothing on it. Well, I guess overall this video didn't really explain anything. Other, of course, than all of that electrical mumbo jumbo and how easy it is to die, and how useless some Pokedex entries can be. The more you know, I guess. Do you have any insane or interesting Pokedex entries that you've been racking your brain over for years on why it's a thing or how a Pokemon could possibly do that? Anything in the Pokedex that you think is just totally wrong? Let me know in the comments down below, and as always, please never stop using that electric-powered noggin.